Happy Scrumminous Day 21. Let's see what we got in the stocking today. Ta-da! Okay, this scrub, I can't say I'm the most proud of, but it was kind of more an experiment, honestly. I can't tell you how many comments I get. Ooh, yeah, this is very liquidy and that wasn't the plan. I always get so many comments from people wanting me to make a scrub using a store-bought base, specifically a whipped foaming base like this one. And I actually bought this one two years ago. So that's probably why it's not super fluffy anymore because it's technically expired, but I wanted to go ahead and give it a go. I wanted just an easy formula for today. And yeah, I'll show you guys what I did. I'll also add in a little bit of information that I found from Wholesale Supplies Plus, which is who I bought the base for, about how to use it and stuff. So technically this base is just a like a whipped foaming base. It's basically like a whipped soap, but it's made with surfactants. What is that called? A uh, foaming bath whip. So some people call it whipped soap, some people call it a foaming bath whip, but I think foaming bath whip would be the better technical term because it's not technically a soap, it's made with surfactants. And this on its own, you can use as a whipped soap. Um, when they buy it, they recommend you adding in 3% fragrance and a water-based coloring like mica. And they say that they recommend whipping it with a stand mixer for 10 minutes. I do have a stand mixer, but I haven't got it out yet. Um, I just didn't want the whole thing of like cleaning it first. I wasn't trying to get into all that because it's scrub mist right now, I'm trying to make things easier on me. So keep that in mind if you do get it. They do say a hand mixer would work, but personally I can't mix with my hand for 10 minutes. That's not gonna happen. And they say if you wanna make an exfoliating scrub, they say to add 25 to 50% salt or sugar. And they recommend to use large salt, like crystal salt, like large crystals, whatever, or raw brown sugar. Ooh, I should try that sometime. Cause I haven't tried brown sugar with it. And then they mentioned how over time the fine crystals tend to dissolve in the base, which is true, that will happen. If you add sugar to any product that contains water, the water will start to dissolve it. So that is something you need to keep in mind when making whipped scrubs, which I talked about that a couple videos ago. If you add too much sugar, it'll get like gummy and gross because the sugar is melting. They honestly have a lot of help for, helpful information. They even talk about how to use it as a shaving cream. But essentially, uh, they also say that you can add in 2% Crothix. They call it bubble wash thickener, but it's Crothix. And you can add that in to make it thicker. And I would have tried that with mine to make it thicker, but uh, I don't have any Crothix. And yeah, they also say they don't recommend adding more than 3% oils or butters to the foaming bath whip. But since we're using it as a scrub, we don't really have to apply by that rule. We're just using the base, and then we still need to have our formula equal 100%. If you're using it as a sugar scrub, you still need to add in an additional preservative, even though the base has a preservative. If you're using just the base as a foaming bath whip, and you're only adding in like 3% additional ingredients, then you don't need to add in an additional preservative. And something else I wanna mention, just to show all of you who like, I don't know, just to, just to, I don't know. I feel so bad for people who are, still in business who've been on business like making products like back when I was as well because somebody left a comment under the foaming bath whip I bought and I just had to share it they were like do you expect the price on the four buckets to come down at any time when I bought this in 2020 four buckets was $94 it's heartbreaking seeing the price jump up to $217 less than a year ago it was $129 I cannot believe that. I haven't been keeping track of prices because I don't sell anymore, but I know the prices have just been skyrocketing since 2020. And my heart really goes out to those of you who are still in business, trying to make a profit with all of the prices of these raw materials or bases or whatever you may use going up. That really, really sucks. It's heartbreaking. And I really hope that this doesn't continue to affect more small businesses because I've been seeing a lot of small businesses close, including my own. Fortunately, well, non-fortunately, mine wasn't from, you know, money issues and stuff. Mine was from health issues, but I know making a profit and trying to stay in business is a huge issue a lot of people have when doing this. And I don't know, I've seen a lot of people lose passion for this because I don't know, I feel like since 2020, 2021, the formulating community has definitely been going not downhill in a negative way, but downhill as in there's just not as many people interested. And I don't know. I mean, I've noticed my views going down and 
I don't know if maybe that's just because I took a break for a while and I came back or maybe people aren't interested in my content anymore or maybe a lot of people just aren't formulating anymore. I think it's a mix of all of that, but I definitely see a lot of people who used to formulate, who used to be part of this community, who has like subscriber counts similar to mine, who got even more views than me, who don't even make videos anymore doing this. So it's really sad to see this community start to grow smaller when I got to see it like boom so much during 2020. And yeah, it seems very similar to how it was before 2020, um, where, where there's not as many people. And now I do get recommended people I've never even heard of or seen before on Instagram and TikTok. And I think that's really cool how much it's growing, but also at the same time, I feel like a lot of people who have been doing it for years are unfortunately leaving and not doing it anymore. And I really hate to see that. So I don't know, I guess this is just kind of like a, a, a call out of like, I see you. I hope you keep doing what you're, you're doing. I know this industry is really hard to be a part of. I know it's really discouraging when your art doesn't get acknowledged or seen. And I don't know, I guess that's just what I have to say. Uh, <laughs> Cause it doesn't really have to do with the video but it has to do with the base and I don't know. Yeah, let's just get into it. Basically this video is me just experimenting with the base, trying it out and it not really going the way I expected but still this, the end texture I got is a texture of scrub that people have been recommending me to make. So I don't know, hope you guys enjoy it. And yeah, let's get into the formula. First you wanna start out with a mixing bowl, doesn't need to be heat safe, and then find a foaming bath whip. I purchased mine from Wholesale Supplies Plus, but wherever you wanna buy yours, you can buy yours. Like I said, mine is two years expired, which honestly in the jar, it still looks good, still looks fluffy, still looks thick. So that's why I decided to go ahead and try to use it because it seemed fine on appearance, but don't do this at home, guys. Do not use expired ingredients. I was just doing this as an experiment, see how it worked, because I've never used a base, never got around to it, and I've been meaning to use this base for like ever, and I keep getting comments from you guys wanting to use a base. So then I added in some oil, because I just, I wanted to experiment with adding an oil into it, because I see people do this all the time, and I wanted to try it myself. Then I added in my fragrance oil, followed by my preservative liquid dermal plus because you do want to add an additional preservative if you're going to be adding a lot other ingredients. Then I'm taking this neon orange mica powder and I'm just adding it directly into the base with the oil and preservative and it should mix in totally fine. So this is probably why it's not as like fluffy and thick is because I added in the oil because like I'm thinning it out. So I'm thinking if I didn't add the oil, it would have stayed more fluffy like it was in the jar because it was still thick and fluffy in the jar. Well, it would have been fluffy if I whipped it up probably. But yeah, now it's just pretty thin. And then after that, I added in my white granulated sugar. They do recommend using a coarser sugar than this, but mine actually ended up being fine. It didn't really dissolve, so it worked, but over time it could. And then I added in it some red hoba pearls, make things look a little bit pretty, add some undissolvable exfoliant, get creative with the exfoliants, use whatever you wanna use. But yeah, I did try to keep whipping this, hoping it would get fluffy and it never did. You ended up with the texture like this. Sorry this wasn't too innovating and inspiring, but hopefully like what I talked about in the beginning helps you guys. I don't know. I hope this video was helpful. Hope it was something. But yeah, that is it. I'm not even probably going to be using this scrub because it's expired and I'm scared to. And I definitely don't want to give it to anybody because it is expired. But uh, yeah, that's the end of the video. <laughs>
Shark City Naturals, and DayToRelaxProducts.com. And the rest of these companies are launching soon. SkinByDavu.com, 7th House and Oak over on Etsy, at Black Petal Beauty on Instagram, MyCrownAndGlory.com. Thank you guys so much for your support. Literally, without you guys on the Patreon, I wouldn't be able to continue doing what I do. So thank you so much. <laughs>